chapter 45. Then Yosef could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Yosef made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians heard, and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Yosef said unto his brethren, I am Yosef, doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were affrighted at his presence. And Yosef said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Yosef, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. And now be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that you sold me here, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and there are yet five years, in which there shall be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to give you a remnant on the earth, and to save you alive for a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me here, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, a ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hasten you, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith your son, Yosef, God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not, and you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near unto me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all that you have. And there will I sustain you, for there are yet five years of famine, lest you come to poverty, you, and your household, and all that you have. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that is, my mouth that speaks unto you. And you shall tell my brother of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that you have seen, and you shall hasten and bring down my father here. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck, and he kissed all his brethren, and wept upon them, and after that his brethren talked with him. And the report thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well, and his servants. And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto your brethren, This do you, lay your beast, and go, and get you into the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded this, do you? Take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones, for your wives, and bring your father, and come. Also regard not your stuff, for the good things of all the land of Egypt are yours. And the sons of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the way. To all them he gave each man changes of raiment, but to Benjamin gave three hundred shekels of silver and five changes of raiment. And to his father he sent in like manner ten asses laden with good things of Egypt, and ten she-asses laden with corn and bread and victual for his father by the way. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that you fall not out of the way. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father, and they told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is ruler over the land of Egypt. And his heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him of all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. All right, let's go back up, verse 1, uh, continuing uh, in this story of Joseph. A story that consumes uh, several chapters of, the, of Genesis, we'll find, because the, the parallels of this story are they have a great relationship to even today and it seems like something that is a you know perpetual occurrence but in last chapter we had joseph had had a steward put the money back in the, the sacks of grain and had sent the brothers away he had stowed a little goblet 
uh, vessel in Benjamin's sack uh, and basically had kind of set up a little fake trap a little uh, to catch them and cause them to return and the the we will find that when they go back they are under the interpretation to be made into bondsmen or slaves but we'll find out that was not the true intent uh, at, uh, at all the intent was we'll find to uh, so Joseph could make himself known and uh, um, in, a, in a great way uh, to preserve their life even We'll find out, he, in in that sense, uh, one who would be a, a preserver. So, we, and we're going to pick it up here in verse one, and where they have returned to Joseph now, and uh, after Judah gets done speaking, and Judah has offered himself now as uh, instead of Benjamin, whom Joseph was intending to keep as his bondman. Uh, Benjamin had made it known to him that he had made himself a surety to his father and that he wouldn't be able to go back up uh, and look upon his father uh, in that condition if the lad wasn't with him. And this is really what Joseph was looking for to to see if the, they had learned anything since they had sold him off and they obviously had now that one was willing to give himself up for the instead of the other. Pick it up here in verse 1. And Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. So Joseph starts crying. Uh, this one that's going to add to. Uh, we'll find out he adds uh, two tribes of his own in the end. He could not refrain himself, so he, he starts crying, and he cries aloud, and we'll find everybody could hear him. Uh, he did not hold back, and he says, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him. There was nobody left, while Joseph would make himself known unto his brethren, because or his brothers, because they had not recognized him yet. They had not, he had not made himself uh, known. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians heard, and the house of Pharaoh heard. So he cries aloud, uh, loud enough, so all the Egyptians heard. Egypt, the Egyptians are those of the place of crypts. A crypt is a grave, in a sense. And the house of Pharaoh heard. Pharaoh's the great house. Uh, we'll find out later how uh, Pharaoh got his position. Uh, even Pharaoh heard. Three, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were affrighted at his presence. And Joseph uh, cries out loud, and it says, I am Joseph, I am uh, this one who adds to, does my father yet live? Uh, and his brethren didn't say nothing, they just stood there, they were dumbfounded, their jaw was opened up and hanging there. They were affrighted even at his presence or standing in awe. For, and Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. And Joseph said once again, Come near, I pray you. He draws them a little closer, as we'll find out, to draw them nearer. And as they came near, he says, I am Yosef, this one who adds to your brother, one of a similar understanding, this one you sold into Egypt, or that, even that place of the graves. Five, and now be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here, for God did send me before you to preserve life. And he tells them, do not be grieved, don't. Uh, feel bad or be angry with yourselves uh, try to punish yourselves as we see they had made mention of this that the Lord had made known their sin they had been much bothered probably in their conscience uh, uh, for a quite some time uh, but he tells them not 
uh, be grieved that they sold him there. We'll find out. It, Joseph, con Joseph contributes all things unto the Lord, uh, who has control of all things. The might Elohim here, the powers that be, has all control over everything. And in the end, everything is just according uh, as the way it was supposed to be. But he had sent me before you to preserve life or uh, to make a way. Six, for these two years hath the famine been in the land, and they are yet five years, in which there shall be neither plowing nor harvest. For these two years, and uh, two is something we can witness if we, if we put our mind to it uh, and meditate. These years, years is a, years is a cycle. Uh, these are years are many cycles here, uh, two are two different cycles and these cycles is a accumulation of days periods of di darkness these here are years as it goes through the seasons even of uh, the four seasons uh, of the that there are the accumulate into a year and a year is the, is just just that uh, it's a greater understanding that comes in the seasons uh, through the accumulation of Days and these little cycles of night and d night and light, uh, uh, in a sense, we uh, wander back and forth. Uh, we make mistakes and we correct ourselves. Uh, these cycles lead to seasons as we get older and we mature, um, and we b get greater understandings from these little lessons in life, and basically. Uh, that's what a year is. And, but these two years, these we witnessed the greater understandings. There has been just famine in the land, and there's been no substance. And there are yet but five years, in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And five, because uh, there's there is grace in the greater understandings. Uh, uh, we'll find out the greater understandings in the end, or are the law they are it always has been and there are these five years which there will be neither plowing nor harvest uh but there there's grace in them we'll find because the lord has sustained uh, by the presence um of, of joseph seven and god sent me before you to give you a remnant on the earth and to save you alive for a great deliverance and the and we'll find that jo Joseph Joseph attributes these things unto uh, the powers of of of, of creation the uh, of Hashem Himself. That's the presence of the Lord. And it's sent to save a remnant. A remnant is just a, por a small amount uh, to be left on the earth, uh, earth and anything of the earth, even in in the flesh. Uh, to save a life for a great deliverance, uh, this great deliverance, even that which the Lord had spoken to Abraham, uh, that is still yet to come. The deliverance here from the famine is just a a representation of that. Eight. So now it was not you that sent me here, but God, and He hath made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. And it was not them that had sent him there to, to uh, we'll see, they sold him into Egypt. Um, but it was was God who had sent uh, Yosef to Egypt and had made him a father to Pharaoh. A father here is a, a principal one, one who is, uh, we'll find out, to have authority uh, even to Pharaoh Pharaoh's the great house and the Lord of all his house he's the ruler of all that he has this the ruler over all the land of Egypt uh, the one who's in charge in the land of Egypt is that place of graves uh, place of graves that's where the dead are nine hasten you and go up to my father and say unto him thus saith your son Yosef God hath made me Lord over all Egypt. Come down unto me and tarry not. And he tells them to go back up to their to my father, 
that's the one who will find out, give birth to all of them, and said, say unto him, the, your son Yosef, the one who's going to add to, that the Lord, uh, Hashem, that's, that is the presence of the Lord, uh, the Elohim, the powers of creation itself, hath made me Lord of Egypt, that place of the graves, to tell him to come down unto me, and to tarry not, ten, and you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near unto me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all that you have. And to and that you would dwell here in the land of Goshen. Goshen means to draw near, and that's what they would do. They would draw nearer, uh, we'll find out, with all that they had, uh, 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 their children, their children's children. And this was to show the generations even that would remain there, uh, we'll find out in, in Egypt, that place of the grave, uh, with their flocks and their herds. And this is all that, that they would lead and all that they had and all that you had, and all that they had. Eleven, and there will I sustain you, for there are yet five years of famine, lest you come to poverty, you and your household and all that you have. And there will I sustain you, because we'll find out the Lord had prospered Joseph greatly uh, prior to the great famine, that he might sustain them throughout that period uh, of the famine. He says there was yet five years of famine left, and there's grace in the greater understandings of the famine. Uh, that famine is a time that there's no substance, we'll find out, uh, to nourish the flesh. The, um, lest you come. In the end, uh, the, the, that famine in the end is going to be for the word, and that word that the Lord spoke was the law. And it's, and it's to preserve you, lest you come to poverty, lest you be without anything and, and that's not only the substance necessary uh, to sustain the flesh but all other as well to be and your household and all that you have that you, you lose everything you've got 12 and behold your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin that is my mouth that speaks unto you and behold your eyes see we're going to see that he he's seen all the things that Joseph has sent, and he sends uh, Benjamin. It's going to be a witness as well with the, uh, his mouth. We'll find out. Will be that which one that speaks. Benjamin, the son of my right hand, he's uh, the or uh, the strength of of the masculine one. We'll find out that is sent forth and that that's to be of a masculine authority this mouth that speaks is uh giving a witness to um, to that fact that he's seen uh yosef and Joseph is simply the one that's going to add to 13. And you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen. And you shall hasten and bring down my father here. And you should tell him of my glory. And that was his magnificence. That had even his position in Egypt. That was that he was given rule over all the land of Egypt. That's that place of graves. And you should hasten and bring him down down my father here and to bring uh, we'll find out down or and, uh, is to cause to descend into that place that we're even talking about that place of graves uh, that's where we're at 14 and he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept and Benjamin wept upon his neck he falls upon his brother's neck and weeps uh, his brother is the one who has the same understanding. We'll find out. Benjamin was born from Rachel. Uh, Benjamin and Joseph were born from Rachel. Rachel's that lost Jew, that one who kind of went astray. She did so, I think, when she uh, stowed the little Thetrophim away there in the saddle. 
But they, he weeps upon his neck. 15. And he kissed him, all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. And he kisses all his brethren. That's all the rest of them. All the ones of similar understanding. And he weeps upon them. He shares this uh, this sorrow with everybody. And after that, his brethren talk with him. They have the ability to speak now because he has uh, fully acknowledged and made himself known. 16, and the report thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. So the report, uh, somebody gets word over to Pharaoh. He hears of the matter. He heard uh, Yosef cry out. Pharaoh's the great house, and even his house, that's the place where uh, he was uh, abiding. Joseph's brethren are come. And he finds out that the, these ones of the same understanding of Joseph, this one who adds to, have come. It pleases Pharaoh and everybody in his house. 17 of Pharaoh said unto Yosef, Say unto your brethren, This do, lay your beast and go, get you into the land of Canaan. And Pharaoh says to Joseph, We'll find out it's going to be a repetition of what Joseph has already spoken. Uh, say unto your brothers, those that's those of the same under, similar understanding, we'll find out they're not exactly the same, but they all come from one father. This do you, load your beasts, and that's those things that are going to carry your burdens, and go, get you to the land of Canaan, that place of humility, 18, and take your father, your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat of the fat of the land. And we'll see. They go to retrieve uh, Yaakov, and uh, that's their father here, this one who gave the seed to them, and all their households, everything they had, and they was going to come down to the Pharaoh, that's the great house there in Egypt, the place of graves, and he was going to give them all the good of the land of Egypt all the great good things of that place even uh, of Egypt. Egypt was a, a it was a great place at that period of time and remained so for a long period of time. We find out Egypt was inhabited by the descendants of Ham, the, uh, the son of Noah. The, but he promises them the good of the land, and they're going to come in under the good intentions of a Pharaoh, we'll find out. But nobody lives forever, and things change under authorities. 19, now you are commanded this, do you? Take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones, for your wives, and bring your father and come. And now that you are commanded, this uh, uh, became a rule sent out by the Pharaoh, and this what they were commanded to do, to take the wagons out of the land of Egypt. Wagons are uh, things that they was going to use to carry their household, we'll find out, carry their little ones to uh, for the journey, to uh, and their wives. The wives are going to be these, uh, a wife is the reflection of the understanding of her husband, that one the Lord even gave to him, and Bring them and your father and come. 20. Also regard not your stuff, for the good things of all the land of Egypt are yours. So don't regard your stuff. You are not going to need it, for all the good things of the land of Egypt are yours. The Pharaoh was going to give them houses, give them things. We'll find they wouldn't need uh, all their earthly things in that place. 21. And the sons of Israel did so, and Yosef gave them wagons, according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the way. And the sons, those who come forth from Israel, that one that contends with the mighty one, we'll find out, and, and, and with man as well. Yosef gave them wagons, just like he had said, to carry their children and their wives and gave them the provisions for the way, the food and everything that they would need to make the journey, 22, 
To all them he gave each man changes of raiment. But to Benjamin he gave three hundred shekels of silver and five changes of raiment. And to all of them he gave each man would be changes of raiment. To change your raiment is to take off an outer garment and to put on a new garment. Uh, garments here are more than just clothing. It's a covering. Uh, it's a changing of perception. It's a changing of appearance. It's the... Um, changing sometimes in direction even of life uh, but to Benjamin we'll find out the son of my right hand the this one that comes forth in strength um, having the, the, the max the the masculine qualities of son he gave 300 shackles of silver 300 shackles are uh, three is always something that completes it makes it strong uh, Hundred is the judgment. The shekels is is a measure that's weighed out uh, of silver. Silver is a something's going to pass through the fire. It's purified. It's set aside. It's you might say devoted as a, um, a price to be paid. And these five changes of raiment and five changes of raiment. There's going to be grace now. Uh, in these changes of raiment. These changes of raiment are the appearances, uh, you might say, uh, the perceptions, 23. To his father he sent in like manner ten asses laden with good things of Egypt, and ten she-asses laden with corn and bread and victual for his father by the way. To his father he sent in like manner these ten asses laden with these good things of Egypt. And this is what he sent. It's this like manner is in after this manner. He sent to his father. That's the one who would who seed he come from, this one he was born from, these ten asses that were laden with the good things of Egypt. Ten's always the law. These asses here we'll find out these are the male asses because we have reference to the she ass. The the male is the uh the one that's going to act in strength, uh, we can uh, more more like the uh, negative effect, you might say. And even though it's loaded with the good things of Egypt, the place of graves, so it's like the the the, the punishment kind of. I refer to it as from the law in the place of graves, and the ten she asses laden with corn and bread and victual for his father. By the way. And we'll find out as well. He would send these ten. It's the law once again. Uh, loaded with these uh, she asses. And that's going to be when I like to see the positive. It's kind of like the pleasant side of the law. With this corn, bread, these victuals. That which would sustain even his father. That one he would come forth from, by the way. On the way, in the journey. Corn, this corn should be grain. Grain's what they're going to make the bread from, and bread that's prepared for now. It, it's all the law. Uh, that's what the bread is. This sustains the flesh uh, for the journey. Twenty-four. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that you fall not out of the way. So he says to his brethren, go, that's those of same understanding, and they do depart. And as they do, he says, see that you fall not out of the way. Don't get lost. Uh, don't be arguing amongst yourselves. Uh, uh, as you go, uh, stay st basically straight in your path or in that journey. You will find they're going to return to the land of Canaan to retrieve Yaakov. And they, 25, and they went up out of Egypt, that place of graves, and they came into the land of Canaan, that land of humility, unto Yaakov, their father. Yaakov is the supplanter. 26, and they told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they tell him now that Joseph's still alive. 
uh, after many years of believing that he was dead and torn in, in, to pieces. Uh, Yacob doesn't believe them at first, and his heart fainted, or uh, he didn't get excited. 27. And they told him all the words of Yosef, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Yacob, their father, revived. Then they told him all the words of Joseph. That's that one it's going to add to. These words which he had said, and that's what he had said, that this would be this mouth, uh, even that which they, he would see. And he saw the wagons, those things that would carry the little ones and the wives will find on the journey, which Joseph, uh, the one who would add to, had sent to carry. The spirit of Jacob revives, to come sp to to revive is to be like to be born again into a a, a reason to exist well you might say um, have a a a great purpose in life uh, 28 and Israel said it is enough Joseph my son is yet alive I will go and see him before I die and Israel that is the one who contends with the mighty one the and man as well Joseph says it's enough that it was, it, that's enough that Joseph is yet alive and I will go to see him before I die before I cease to exist we'll find out he went down uh, to see Joseph and we're going to pick it up in the next chapter Genesis 46 turn and return